Right, hello Henry. Thanks for joining us. How's the lockdown been treating you? Um, it's been all right, to be fair. I've been keeping myself busy uh, as much as I can. Obviously not working, not coaching, just trying to keep fit. A bit like everyone else, really, getting out once a day if we can. Trying to stay fit in the garden, keeping yourself entertained. Yeah, it's just one of those things that's got to be done. So last summer, we first bumped into you when you were playing in the, you played the second half for Deal when we played there in pre-season. And then you played, I think, the full 90 minutes for Whitstable a few days after that. Um, at what point do you know Cugley was interested and then that you'd be joining in Victor? Um, so it's a bit of a weird one, really, because I went to, I, I played for a few t- clubs in last pre-season. Like, I played for Ramsgate a couple of games and then uh, didn't really, nothing really worked come of that. So I just spoke to the people at Dill and just asked if I could get some minutes. It was quite funny, actually. I played for Dill on the Saturday against Kennington. And on that Tuesday, we played Folkestone. I had a school trip with work in Fort Park and I was stuck in traffic. So literally, I got there halfway through the warm-up. So I didn't even know I was going to make it. So Kingy gave me said, like, look, we'll just play the second half. And obviously, I played the second half and uh, I thought I'd done all right. Like, we had a bit of banter. <laughs> me and your fans, time-wasting in a pre-season friendly. But... Yeah, that might have been me. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> But yeah, after the game, I was actually, I know the Whitsboy assistant manager, Paul Murray, was speaking to Cugs and uh, sort of introduced me. And then Cugs just got talking to Cugs after that game and just talking as like a three. Uh, basically, Cugs was said, look, we're interested. I think Joe, I think his name was Joe, was leaving for university. He said, look, we are looking out for a keeper. Um, obviously, like you've done well tonight. And Paul, like Paul told him about where I've been and stuff. Um he said, like, obviously, would you, like, be interested in signing? And then at that moment, Paul said, well, we're playing Folkestone Saturday and our keeper's away, so you might as well play for us against Folkestone and then sign for Folkestone after. <laughs> so so I knew the whole Whitstable game. So I was a bit under pressure because I knew I was signing. It was a bit of a weird one. And it didn't really help that Ira broke through in, like, the fifth minute and smashed one in the top corner. <laughs> it, gets me, it gives me a bit of stick for but, like, I knew Finn, I knew Alfie, and I knew Ira from uh, Gillingham. So I sort of texted them to see what it was like and stuff. And they knew that I was going to sign. And obviously, I was getting a bit of chirp as well at the Whitstable game <laughs> from, from some of the Victor fans. So I was just laughing in my head because I was like, if only you knew uh, I was signing after this game. <laughs> so that's how it comes back. So I, I knew before the Whitstable game that the plan was to speak to Cogs after the game and, and sign for the next season. And Ira stuck one past you quite early in that game. Yeah, it was a good finish, to be fair. Very good finish. Stuck it all over Instagram as well, didn't he? So. And you were the only kid that would be beaten by Callum Davis all season. Was that Callum who scored from the corner? Yeah. Oh, God. To be fair, I nearly got beat by him at Horsham. <laughs> Couldn't let that happen twice. We'll come on to that later, don't worry. <laughs> so you started the season as number two to Tim, but you got your first start early away at Horsham. Firstly, you made a wonderful side, didn't I, Callum, a great goal at the wrong end. But then you had the penalty in an injury time. How did you feel when you were waiting to face that? Oh, I don't know. It was just a mix of emotions because I think like we weren't that great at all. Like Looking back, we weren't great. We rode our luck through that game, obviously. Made that save in the first half, but they hit the bar. Uh, there was a few crosses in the second half that flashed across goal that only needed a touch. Um, it just felt like one of them games that like we might just nick this and then obviously the penalty at the end was just like I don't know if it was a penalty it was quite soft and then at the end I thought oh, he's, he's quite an experienced player and I, I normally go lefties normally go to the goalies left but I thought oh, I think he's going to have a bit <laughs> about him and stick it to my right so he absolutely sent me for a hot dog I remember just looking and uh, the fans were giving me loads of stick behind the goal because I literally time wasting again like <laughs> And to be fair, I was laughing back with them and always have a laugh with the away fans. And um, and yeah, I saw him drag it wide. I was just like, oh my God, like it was meant to be. All right. The next league appearance you made was home to Bogner. Yeah, it was frustrating. Um, it was quite a big one for me because I had, like, obviously where I'd played before um, weren't really that close to home. Obviously Margate. So I had quite a lot of friends there, loads of family all watching. Probably like some of them for the first time. Like they'd known me years, but... So it was one of them where it was a bit like, oh, there's people actually I know. So it was a little bit of that at the back of my head. Um, obviously, like, 
it just was one of them games as a goalie that you just seemed to like whatever you done it, the ball would hit you. Like there was one save in the second half where the ball flicked up and was going back in and it just landed back in my arms. And then obviously took one straight in the crown jewels as well. Um, it was just one of them games that everything hit you and it just seemed like we could nick a nick like a draw or even win it. But then I, I do think Bogner were the better team by by far again, but. It was just devastating that last goal because I slipped. Like there was a slip, I tried to push off and my foot gave way, and I couldn't just get there. It was it was quite a good finish, but it was just so much frustration about it because you feel like you've done so much. But obviously it was it was quite good on a personal note to show people what I could do. Obviously uh, being at home as well, so the majority of our, our fans it was probably the first time they see me see me play. So. I enjoyed the Furret game the uh, the Tuesday night after more, to be fair. <laughs> but personally, it was good to like make my home debut and stuff. But obviously, the result was so frustrating. And I think everyone felt a bit deflated after. But it was one of them things, like everyone beats everyone in our league. And you can't get too down on one result because the next few games, uh, you can go on to win in a row. Yeah, speaking of that East Syrup game, you got an assist for Ira in that one with a big uh, ball up top and he twisted one of their defenders inside out. Uh, do you often pick up a few assists or was that a bit of a rarity for you? I tell you, it's a bit like, when I was on loan at Deal, I got a few. Um, I think playing in the academies, it's a lot of playing out from the back. And it, and um, I, to be fair, I really enjoyed that one with Ira because he actually had quite a lot to do. And we were they just scored as well. I think it was 2-1 at the time or 3-1 maybe, it was quite tight, and they were, they were having their spell in the game where they got their goal and their tails were up, and just, a, I, caught, I think it was a deflected cross court, and I just, I was going to kill it completely, and I just heard Ira screaming, and it was like a 1v1, so I was just like, right, I'm just going to put my foot through this and hope for the best, and then to be fair, he's brought it down well, and still had to do quite a lot, like beat a few players, and then smashed it in, and it was more of like a relief as well, just to like get that breathing space again of a go. It sort of killed the game off. So it was probably one of my like favourites of the season. Um, but other than that, normally uh, from where I played before, it's a lot of playing out from the back. And if it is starting a quick counter attack, it's normally the pass before before this person who gets the assist. Right. What was your favourite save from the season? Oh, favourite save. <laughs> so it was probably the one at Horsham. I just. Like even now, like I look at it sometimes, I sort of saw it come up, and I like I just remember just fry, frying myself at it. I like I didn't really like, and then getting a good hand on it and seeing it go past the post. But it was just the videos after. I was, like even some of my mates going, "Have we saved that?" And it's just one of them things where you've just thrown yourself. And I think if you die for everything, like, you never know. It's millimeters when you're playing goal. Like it only takes a touch. And I think Cal's face from one of the angles. I think it was a fan. It was just pure relief. But I think it set me up for that game. Like, obviously, the first game you're coming into. I think I took a cross early as well, which is always helpful. I think playing in goal, the first thing you do in a game, like, sets you up. And that was quite early on. So I just sort of, as soon as that happened, I was like, right, that's it. Clean sheet today. Like, that should have gone in. But, yeah, that's probably my best save of this season. And what's your favourite goal that we scored this season? Oh, so obviously, I'm going to be biased and say the one I set up higher for, for the relief. Um so the the one that stands out for me was I know it wasn't a winning goal, but it was Tyler's against uh, Cole Shorten. Because I was speaking to him before, and there was a game before where uh, I can't remember. It was Edgy said like script like was saying, look, you need to square it. And I think he went for a shot, and I think it was playing on his mind a bit. And I was talking to him before the game, like and stuff like that. I was like, in training, he's probably one of the worst like to face because the things he does with the ball where it swerves away and stuff. It's an absolute goalie's nightmare. So the one at Cole Shorten where he's just stopped it and whipped it top fins was the half in that goal of the season, to be fair, for me. I know Ira's in every chart possible for goal of the season. I'm down to four now, so Ira's only got one left in it. Has he? <laughs> he wasn't happy with the draw for the uh, second round of groups coming out. He had a, he had a whole group of four of his goals and he that's his fault for scoring so many goals that's what I said I said if you're going to score that many and fill it up you're going to end up with groups that are all yours to be fair like to be fair to us like we we said for the whole season like it was a massive frustration for like Cargs and Edgy like we never really scored any tap-ins where someone would just square it across across goal there was just loads of well-played goals and like smashes from like outside the box 
like the one at Bowers and Pitchy away was one of the best work goals as well where and I heard he just rocked it from like 20 yards if like we just didn't really seem to score any tappings or it hit someone and go in question from Jake how did you feel winning the penalty shootout that was great because obviously everyone who watched that game I had a bit of a stinker for uh their first goal and my mates ripped me for that so much but that's part and parcel playing in goal um I always do quite back myself uh with penalties and I just saw it as an opportunity just to just to clear clear my name a bit <laughs> it sort of lower the amount of stick I was going to get in the changing room um but yeah I, I, it was great feeling obviously unfortunately it's the last bit of football that we got to see but no it was a good night personally for me um and like it was a good way to if we for it to to end really like a bit of celebration a bit of nerves and stuff so yeah it was it was a good feeling thanks for joining us henry no worries take care Bye, mate.